federal judge let the air out of Deflategate Thursday, erasing Tom Brady's four-game suspension. U.S. District Judge Berman said NFL Commissioner Roger, Roger Goodell went too far in affirming punishment of the Super Bowl-winning quarterback. The suspension was premised upon several significant legal deficiencies, Berman wrote in his opinion. I want to focus on Tom Brady, though, now. Shannon Sharp, Mark Schler, Skip Bayless, Molly Karam, back here with you. We talked about, Skip, Brady's fighting to clear his name. Yep. Yeah. Do you think people's opinion might have changed and your opinion changed in terms of your confidence in Brady in clearing the tarnished name? It's a great question. Very curious to hear what you say and you say to what I'm about to say. I disqualify myself or qualify myself that I'm a big Brady fan. Mm -hmm. I think he's basically a good guy and obviously an all-time great player. Yep. I have gained respect for him. As much as I already had, I've gained respect because I talked to three friends of his two days after the Wells report came out. And I sat right here and told my partner, Stephen A. Smith, Brady is prepared to fight this to the legal death. And of course, Stephen A., I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he scoffed at that because this was going to be a long, hard, uphill fight with camp soon about to open. And it took an enormous amount of willpower on this man's part while his friends are telling him, you've got to fight back publicly. You've got to hold a, do a media session. Come out swinging. Say, I didn't do any of this. I, I believe he had no knowledge of this. And I believe that from the start. You can believe what you want to believe. And as you keep saying, a lot of people are just going to believe what they believe from the start. And that will never change. But his reputation was crushed over this the day the Wells report came out. He was branded in the court of public opinion nationally as a cheater who lied about it. And from that moment on, he kept telling his friends, I'm not going to fight back publicly. I'm going to fight back in court. And then I'm going to fight back on the football field. I'm going to do it with my actions. Do you know how much energy and emotion it took on this man's part to keep fighting this in court? Do you know how many hundreds of hours it took? to talk to the, the lawyers, to, to background the lawyers, to go back and forth, to appear in court three different times, miss days of training camp that, that are so valuable to him that he cherishes because he cares so much about his football team. But in the end, he had to care a little more about clearing his name. I have so much more respect than I even had in the first place. He is winning the battle. He fought City Hall and won, or he's, at least he's winning, winning to this day. He's yeah. winning. And he took on the all-powerful all excuse me, all powerful commissioner, and he's winning. And I think he has a chance to win ultimately. And because of that, I think his name has been cleared as much as it could be cleared in the court of public opinion to date. And I, I don't think people are giving him enough credit for the resolve and the resiliency that was required to win this fight, even at this step. I look at it like this I, I, and I agree with you I mean I, I don't know that I could have any more respect for him and as far as legacy is concerned I never look at it like it was tarnished anyhow a it, lot it, of people it, did though you got I understand yeah. that yeah. and and I agree with Shannon what he said earlier is the people that look at it that way you'll never change their opinion no. regardless of what happens regardless if he wins in court they're always gonna look at it and say something fishy went on right and and I've spent enough time in an NFL locker room to know that there's something fishy going on in every NFL locker room. <laughs> you know, that's part of this case is to try to change the culture of the National Football League because the National Football League has been tarnished. So that's part of what's going on here is trying to get above board because we've taken that hit and we've got some things as a league that are really weighing us down right now. So I understand that aspect of it. Here's what I respect so much about Tom Brady. I mean, be off the field stuff. Your natural reaction as a great competitor is to fight verbally, publicly, and go after people. I Listen, we're always competing. If you, There's always a game going on. If you don't know what the game is, you're probably it, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I don't care if we're washing dishes, man. It's on. I'm up on you 14 to nothing. You don't even know what the game is right now. That's how I, that's just my, my nature. Yep. I agree. And so my nature is when I'm attacked to go on the attack. Yep. And that's part of being in an NFL locker room. We always say it. I mean, this guy right here, don't come in the NFL locker room without something that matches, right? <laughs> because this son of a gun is going to, he, he will verbally undress you to the point where you change your, your, change your outfit before you get on the plane. Don't be Glenn Kadrez with a big wide collar shirt on because you will never hear the end of it, right? <laughs> so 
that's part of, of, of that locker room mentality. And to be able to bite your tongue through this process and never go after the league, to not go after the commissioner, to not go after the process, to not go after anybody publicly, that says a lot about him as an individual because that to me is the hardest thing to do. Because let me tell you something, like I'm a good loser, but I am a bad winner. Mm -hmm. and. If I was Tom Brady right now, I'd, I'd, I would have called my own press conference to talk about how good I did, <laughs> right? So uh, it's just a different deal there. If I had won that case, I'd have oh a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, He's above that, reproach. It's, it's easy to fight when you're fighting with other people's money because Tom didn't have to put up any money in his defense, and he got the best defense that money could buy. Skip, see, I, I, I went through something in 2010 where I got accused of sexual assault. And I wanted to speak because I know it wasn't true. And my attorney said, no, that's not what we're going to do. He says, what do you have? I say, I got 300 text messages where she's saying what she's going to do if I don't talk to her. Mm. He printed all of them out. Now, mind you now, she said this. She didn't go to the police. She didn't file a report. She went to the judge. When she explained he's 6'2", he played for an NFL player, black, 250 pounds, they wrote the restraining order. Now, this gets out, and everybody ran with it. Shannon Sharp accused, accused of sexual assault. But when she dropped the charges, everybody said, I paid her off. And that was furthest from the truth. Now, to this day, when people get upset at me, if I say something good about the Broncos or something negative about the Patriots, they say, didn't you get for a sexual assault? See, you can't change perception in some people's mind. Yeah. Some people, no matter what happens, the, the female can come out and says, I made the whole story up because I was upset yeah. at him. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they're going to say, he paid her to say that. And that's what Tom Brady is going against. He, he can't change people's mind. Tom Brady is an all-time great. Go ahead, Molly. You want to? Yeah, and I appreciate you sharing your story there. I will say this, though. For people that were on the fence, like myself, I think you can sway them. I think he is swaying people that weren't sure. Yes, if you're on one end of it, they're cheaters, yes, right. the Patriots, Belichick, everybody. Sure. He's innocent. But if you're kind of in between, and I was feeling things out, hearing more and more, I, I think he does change opinion with this. But, but people are going to say, so you want us to believe that nothing happened. So NFL, this was just a, 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 right. an agenda. But see, and then it's like, okay, well, where are the guys? Right. But nobody wants to, the NFL doesn't want the, the guys to come talk. Tom Brady didn't want the guys to talk because, Skip, I heard you say, well, then you find out how the sausage made. Forget the sausage. What about mm -hmm. the deli meat and the nuggets? Mm -hmm. They might say something that blow everybody's minds away. So you know what? Let's just let them go away and we'll, we'll, we're, we're out. Because think about it, Skip. Woodward and Bernstein found Deep Throat in Watergate. Mm -hmm. And we can't find two level equipment guys living in Maine or Massachusetts. <laughs> how is that possible? Okay. I didn't lose any respect for Tom Brady. I didn't gain it. I don't know if he can get any higher because what being a low round draft pick like I was, I know how the odds are stacked against you, and I know how you have to fight. And all that Tom Brady has accomplished, he feels he still has to fight. Okay. And that fight he took to the commissioner. The one point I take great exception to is you said he didn't have to pay a nickel for his defense. No. That did not matter to this guy. He he's okay financially. He, I'm not, but I'm saying this. You know, he, he, he could have paid for his own and would have paid for his own but if that's, he came to that. Skip, you know how the criminal justice system works. The more you have, the more you can fight. The people that's the most of the people but, that's in the that's, that's why you pay dues to the NFLPA because that you you get you get represented. That's that's what but, they would do for but, any player. But here's the thing, Skip. Let's be real. Mark, you can attest right. to this. When we're in the meetings, how many quarterbacks actually sat in that union meeting? Yeah, I mean nobody. They had a quarterback club, Skip. Yeah. The, the NFL Players Association brought back the quarterback club because they were a separate entity. So all of a sudden, we want to make people think that Tom Brady, where Tom Brady's name was on when he when they filed this injunction to get to the league and Peyton Manning. That was just, that was just Okay, but Shannon, service. time is money. And do you know how many hours no, it took to debrief lawyers and to go to court over this? And imagine it, how much that money, how much it, it cost. Okay, but do you know how many players would have just finally just given up uh, uh, two months ago and said, okay, I'll do it. If they'll, they'll give me two games, I'll admit some guilt. And let's go forward. Nobody, okay? nobody was going to, if, 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 look, if somebody's going to fight for me and I don't have to pay a nickel, 
thing that makes your job a lot easier. All you have to do is just go sit down. Look, guys, I didn't do anything. I don't know, have any knowledge. I don't know what the NFL is talking about. Yes, I know these guys, but I didn't tell them to take that, that PSI under 12.5. That's not what I okay, did. Okay, so you're saying the NFL PA would not have represented any other player the way they're representing Tom Brady? I'm saying they did, but I'm saying you make it seem like he fought. Well, he just fought. He just skipped. He, had he no fought. He had no fought. skill. Hey. What what was his alternative to not fighting? I, and I think I think one thing in the in the whole fight is it's more than Tom Brady. It's it's he has put himself out there. It's not just about clearing his name or um, or basically not getting besmirched by the National Football League from a legacy, a legacy standpoint. But it really was um, for the whole league in general to say, dude, you got to be the forefront. You are the face of this league. Yeah. You are the Super Bowl champion four times over, and we need you to set precedent so that we can affect change within this league for the guys. You, you, you've got to understand how an NFL roster is built. It's an 80-20 roster, meaning that 20% of the guys make 80% of the money, yeah. right? Yeah. And the rest of us are scrapping. Hoping and praying. Right. You know what? It's, it's, it's it, you know, to quote Braveheart, it's, it's fighting for uh, scraps like a long shanks table. You know, that's what we're doing. So he's basically standing up in in lieu of, in that gap, of all the guys like me who played the game, who are scrapping out a living from year to year to year, he's standing up so they, when it comes down to them, they don't have to go through this same process where where the commissioner can just dole out the frontier justice. Okay, let me, you, you talk about the larger game that's yeah. being played. Let me drive this home with the final point that Tom Brady saw a larger game being played here. Remember, his head coach had no knowledge of this. He wouldn't defend him, he wouldn't say a word about him. His owner defended him to start with at the Super Bowl, then completely sold him out and took the punishment. Did he not? Yes. He took the fine, he took the draft choice loss, right? Then he reversed field later and said, oh, I shouldn't have trusted the NFL. But the damage had been done. Brady was fighting alone right. against a commissioner who dearly needed to do two things at once for the sake of the other owners. They all wanted to get New England for serial cheating over many Belichick years. That's fine. But Tom Brady was being framed for it in his mind. Right. And I believe that also, that he was going to be the fall guy, 38-year-old, aging quarterback, superstar. But let's take him down. And what would it serve to do for Roger Goodell? It would rebuild his autonomy and his power in the wake of all the Ray Rice uh, uh, bad decisions that he made over sexual violence back into his past, all right. the way back to, to uh, Bounty Gate. So, Brady saw the larger game and he said, I, I'm not going to be the, the pat here, so to speak, and Patriot, you know, I'm not going right. to be the fall guy. I'm, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to fight you. But Coach Belichick had to take that stance because he was doing with Spygate. And if he'd have been I... doing this, he'd have been banned. Okay. Guys, we have to take a break here. Mark, thank you so much. My for pleasure. By last minute. That, was, that was great. great, you, great insight. Go. And I do want to discuss further how this affects uh, Roger Goodell and if it is going to invoke change there with the NFL. And speaking of the NFL, PA, they released a statement. We'll tell you what they said after the break.